Karuna, Karuna, Tarangi Takshi, Dritta Pasha, Kusha, Kushpa Bana Chapa, Anima di Biravritam, Mayukai, Raham Nityeva, Vibhavaye. Laksha Roma Lata Dharata Samuneya Madhyama Stana Bhara Dalan Madhya Patabandhya Valitraya Arunaruna Kausumbha Vastra Vasvat Katitati Ratna Kinkini Karam Yarashana Dhamma Bhushita Kame Shagnata Saubhagya Mardavoru Dvayanvita Manikya Mukutakara Janu Dvaya Virajita Namaste. People today think it's very fashionable to be atheistic and not believe in any gods or goddesses. They think this is really cool and that they can meet life head on and deal with it without any help from within or above. And this is wrong. They think they're being very scientific and very logical, but they don't know what scientific really means. Science means scientific method. And scientific method you postulate a theory, then you test your theory by experiment. And then, <clears throat> if you can either prove it or falsify it, at least you've learned something. So how many people actually take up these holy names and chant them in the prescribed way, not just any old way, and actually test the theory. I, and not too many, I think. People are lazy, and they say they have no time. But actually, they have plenty of time. How long does it take to chant these thousand holy names? Half an hour, maybe? Maybe a little more, if you're very slow. But still, why they think they have no time is that they're misspending their time and energy on useless temporary things that won't make them happy. True happiness comes from within. And when you chant the holy names of the goddess, she helps you in innumerable ways. Some you can perceive and some you can't. But if you actually test these thousand holy names, you will actually be able to experience the result. And from that point on, it's not necessary to believe anything you know. See, that's why the first step in the Noble Eightfold Path is right view. Once you have right view, you have confidence, not faith, not belief. You have understanding. You know you can perform the experiment, get the result, and from that point on, it's not a matter of faith at all. All you need is enough trust to try the experiment. So <clears throat> let's look at our names for today. Lakshiroma Lata Dharata Samuneya Madhyama. Her waist is to be known only from the creeper like hair, as described in the previous Nama. The confidential meaning is that Atma, the soul or consciousness that resides in the body, is subtle. Uh, it can't be known 
by ordinary methods. It can only be known by realization, and that requires following a process. Because obviously, people go through their ordinary lives for years and years and never realize it. So, there must be some process to realize it, and when you follow that, you get the result. See, we're discussing her form from the top down. Now we've gotten to her waist. But her waist is confidential. She doesn't show her waist. She's not a modern girl who dresses like a prostitute. She keeps that confidential for her lover, Shiva. So, if you want to know that part of her, you have to become like Shiva. You have to become Shiva. And that, of course, is only possible through the yoga process. Next. Stanabhara dalan madhya pattabandhya valitraya. The golden belt that she wears supports her waist as it bends under the heaviness of her bosoms, resulting in three folds in her stomach. Saundarya Lahari, 80 says, your bosoms rubbing at the upper arms, abounding the bodice. The God of love has bound your hip with threefold strands to protect your hip from breaking. So this is poetic, of course. But what does it mean? It means that her body is extremely auspicious. She has three lines in the neck, three lines in the waist. And the god of love, Manmata, Kandarpa, or Cupid, has bound her waist with a golden girdle. Huh? And what, what this means is that the knowledge of the universal goddess is very esoteric. It's confidential. It's not for everybody. It's not public. It's confidential means it's private. So <clears throat> by approaching her in private, personally, confidentially, not in a group, but very secretly, not publicly, but only between you and her. And this is how you get these deeper realizations and you come to know her real form. Next. Arunaruna Kausumba Vastra Bhasvat Katitati. She wears a red silk cloth around her waist. Red color means compassion. Everything associated with her is red. Uh, one of her names is Sarvaruna. Everything is red. <laughs> Indicating that she is full of compassion, <clears throat> which is one of the reasons that she's called Sri Mata the mother of the universe. So she has three activities, creation, maintenance, and destruction. And then after some time, after the pralaya or devastation, again she creates. And this cycle goes on and on eternally. So <clears throat> this Sahasranam is not a human composition. It was composed by the eight Vach Devis, the goddesses of speech. And <clears throat> their names are Vasini, Kameshwari, Modini, Vimala, Aruna, Jaini, Sarveshwari, and Kaulini. So Aruna Vajdevi is in her waist. So all these Vajdevis, the goddesses of speech, they give powers called Vaksiddhi. Vaksiddhi means whatever you speak will come to pass. If a person only speaks the truth, they get this Vaksiddhi. This is one reason why the present social condition of lies upon lies is very dangerous because it disempowers people and they cannot do anything because every time they open their mouths they lie. Some people just can't help themselves. It's such a habit they never speak the truth. 
And don't, as a result, they can't attain any spiritual progress. Ratna kinkinika ramya rasana dama bhushita. She is adorned with a girdle studded with mini bells and gems. The Panchadasi mantra consists of three kutas. So Vagbhava kuta was discussed in Namas 13 through 29. Madhya kuta was discussed in Namas 30 through 38. And Shakti kuta will be discussed in Namas 39 through 47. These are the parts of her body. Her body is divided into three parts, the head, the trunk, and the hips and legs. And these are represented by the three kutas. So when we chant this mantra, we're a very powerful mantra that everyone should learn, everyone should become initiated into. And we have a series on it, which I'll post a link to here. When you chant this mantra, you're actually invoking her form. And if you chant the mantra successfully, she will actually appear to you in a form of light, huh? which is brilliant, just like thousands of suns rising up in the sky, huh? this brilliant reddish light. Next. Kamesha Jnata Saubhagya Mardavoru Dvayanvita the beauty of her thighs is known only to her consort and creator, Kameshwara, Shiva. This indirectly refers to the confidential nature of Shakti Kuta, which begins from this mantra. Shakti Kuta means her hips and legs. And this is very confidential because her legs and feet bestow all kinds of benedictions on the living entities. Uh, and also her womb is the birthplace of the entire universe. So she being the universal mother is very, very powerful uh, in terms of the created world. Now in terms of pure consciousness, Shiva is most powerful, but without her, he cannot create he can't do anything. <laughs> he is a static Brahman. But with her, <clears throat> she is the dynamic force that causes time, space, creation, maintenance, destruction, all these things. And finally, Manikya Mukutakara Janudvaya Virajita. Each of her knees is like a single piece of ruby. Huh? Here's a red color again. <laughs> and uh, it appears like a crown, mukut. What is it in here? Mukutakara. So the, the knees are so beautiful. Everything about her is so beautiful that it appears like a crown or a jewel or something extraordinarily beautiful. And this is one of her special qualities, that she is so beautiful, anyone would be attracted. Uh -huh. No one can resist. When she, when she lets go of those arrows of flowers from her sugarcane bow, everybody is hooked, everybody is attracted. And no one can resist her. I had a dream last night. I always wait till the end to tell the really good stuff. In this dream, I was with a bunch of Krishna devotees. As you know, I spent like 25 or 30 years in that movement or around it. <laughs> and so I had picked up the drum and I was starting to lead a kirtan. And they were giving me all kinds of trouble you know, the kids were coming over and throwing dirt on the drum and stuff like this. And finally, some, some administrator, you know, some executive came over and said, you, you can't lead Kirtan here. Huh? So uh, this actually happened uh, several times. 
to me. Where I, I remember one time I had brought all my disciples to Mayapur, which is like the worldwide headquarters of ISKCON. And we were having a kirtan, or we were having a class nearby uh, Prabhupada's samadhi. And the temple president showed up with a bunch of goons and told us that we couldn't have a class. We couldn't do kirtan. Huh? And so we all whipped out our cell phones and started videoing it. <laughs> And uh, then I informed him that the head governing body member for that temple had actually invited us to come there. And one of my, one of my at that, that time, disciples spoke up and said, do we need a license to chant Hare Krishna? <laughs> do we need approval? Uh, no. Anybody can chant the name of God or goddess or whatever you like. Huh? There is no formality. There's no process of approval. You don't have to apply for a license. <laughs> what a ridiculous idea. So anyway, in my dream last night, everybody kind of drifted away and, you know, ignored me. And I was just sitting there and goddess came to me. Shakti came to me and sat down and smiled at me. So you see, this is my reward for having integrity. This is the result of not accepting a perverted spiritual process that relies on hierarchy and authority. That anyone can approach her in confidence. Anyone can reach her in private by chanting her names, by worshiping her in different ways, by doing the different yoga processes, especially Kundalini yoga, Tantra yoga, in private. And she accepts this worship and she rewards them by being personally present with them. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.